this is Mitch from Hendrix Woodworking. I've done an upgrade on my dust collection system. I wanted to give you guys an idea of what I've done. Uh, I've actually moved my dust collector outside. I built this lean-to shed out here. It's got a concrete floor. It's all insulated. Uh, compressor, later videos in this one behind me. Dust collector's in this one right here. Uh, it's insulated and because the dust collection can suck all the heat out of a shop real quick, uh, like two and a half minutes, I decided to put it out here and insulate this and return the air from the dust collector back into the shop so I can keep my heat. Uh, and I'll get this door off here and we'll take a look at it and I'll show you what we've got to work with. Okay, I've got the door removed. Uh, as you can see, I've got a uh, trash can separator. However, I just upgraded from the old, what I call the garbage can top, the plastic separators. Went ahead and got the Oneida Cyclone, supposedly 99.9% uh, .9 efficient. Uh, haven't tested it enough to know, but I do know this thing has got a lot of vacuum. My dust collection, my dust collector itself is right back here in the corner. The bag is your final filter, uh, which I don't expect to catch anything anymore. Everything should go into the trash can. I put two windows over the trash can so I can put a flashlight here, look down through it, see when it's getting full. All my plumbing and everything comes from the inside of the shop. So everything from the inside of the shop comes over through the cyclone, over into the dust collector. And as you can see behind the cyclone there, that's furnace filters. That's an opening window in the wall to the shop. So the air that the dust collector pulls will go right back into the shop. And all these exterior walls in this are insulated, as well as the back side of this door is insulated. So all the heat stays there and goes back to the shop, so this actually becomes a heated area. So we'll move on into the shop and I'll show you what we've got in there. Okay, we're in the shop now. And uh, to give you an idea of where I set everything up, the um, pipe from outside comes in right here. Goes up and across. I went to six inch, did six inch intake on the dust collector, so I went with six inch trunk lines everywhere. And then I dropped to four inch down to the tools and four inch up from my vertical drops down the wall to give me an accelerated airflow to get the rise from the floor to the wall and then six inch running on my trunk lines. This here is an eco gate. We'll get on that at the end of the video. This is actually a, a PLC controller that actually opens gates, closed gates. As far as the blast gates are concerned, it turns the dust collector on automatically, turns the dust collector off automatically. All I have to do is turn the tools on. Uh, I don't have to do anything else. We'll look at it a little bit in later. Then we've got here, I've got, like I said, we've got the 6-inch. This is one of the automatic gates. And then it drops down. I've got 4-inch from that down to my sander. And then the 6-inch feeds on through to the rest of the shop. Uh, okay, this is the rest of the trunk line coming in. Uh, this is the 6-inch feed I'm talking about coming through here. I dropped to 4-inch from there down, 4-inch from here down and I've got four inch from here down. The four inch from here down drops down for my bandsaw. This four inch drops down for the planer. Because the planer slides out in the middle of the floor, I have an extra section of hose for the planer, so when I pull it out in the middle of the floor, I can hook the hose up, and because it does not uh, lend itself to using a vibration sensor for the automatic features, what I've actually done is I've put myself a switch that actually opens this gate, turns on the dust collector, at which point everything's running, sucking the air out for this, and then that cuts it right back off. This one over here is vibration sensing, so as soon as I use the jointer, it automatically comes on. It'll open the gate for this one, close the gate for that one, and any other ones that are open, and go on from that point. I ran these three feeds here off this trunk line, and then I'll show you, I've dropped over across to the other side, and I've run two, truck, two feeds over there that actually one of them splits to do two tables. Okay, here's the other side where I've got my 6 inch trunk coming across. 6 inch dropping to 5 inch to 4 inch. Right down here I've got two blast gates, automatic blast gates. One is wide off to feed two pull, pulls out of the router. I've got a pull that pulls through the fence. And I've got a 4 inch downdraft on the back that downdrafts from the motor down into it. Those two will come over and up. Also, back here on the sander table behind me, it has a downdraft, and the sander table is set up to where whichever sander is turned to the front, it's a Lazy Susan top, whichever sander is on the front, 
that sander gets dust collection by virtue of a donut gasket and a hole that just lines up here or it lines up there according to which sanders turn to the front. The blast gate down here actually turns it on or off to pull from the table and then the, the rotation of the sanders chooses which one gets it. This one comes across to this table saw. I ran five inch through here and then again I dropped a four inch for my vertical rise to give me the most amount of suction from the table saw going back up. That will pull that through from here. My dust collection used to be back in the other room. It was inside. I got a little bit of residual dust, but I had mostly all the plastic type piping and the plastic piping, one is it creates a turbulence. It reduces airflow. And I wanted to go with this automatic gate system to where all these gates are automatic. They have motion sensors that, that touch, that uh, pick up the vibration off of the motors. And then from off the motors, they will open the gate, close any other gates, and then go back and turn on the dust collector. We'll touch on that now. Okay, so here's the brain of the system. This is the PLC that is wired back out to all the gates and all the vibration sensors. And as you saw me turn on a few minutes ago, the actual uh, manual valve for the planer is gate number eight. So this light means gate number eight is on. This is power on. This yellow light would come on if the dust collector is running. This red light comes on if I push this button and go into manual mode where I can do any gate I want to do. These gates, one is the saw, two is the router, three is the sanding table. I've skipped four. Five is the drum sander behind me. Six is the band saw. Seven is the jointer. And of course, eight, the manual gate, is the planer. Any one of these that you turn on selects that one and then moves on. So I'll give you a little demonstration here. I'm going to turn it off and back on so you can see what actually happens. Because when you turn it off and back on, it resets everything and it leaves gate one open. Okay, I've just turned it on and it's opening gate number one. Now it's going to check two and close it if it's open, which it's not. It's going to check three and close it if it's open. In the background you can hear it closing gates. Like I said, four's not hooked up at this point. I didn't need all eight of them. Five, it's checking the uh, drum sander. Six will check the bandsaw. And if you remember, eight was open. So seven will check the uh, plane, uh, joiner and then 8 is the planer. So what you heard right there was it closing the gate to the planer. Now it's back to number 1 being open specifically for the table saw. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step behind us and I'm going to turn on say the sanders which is on gate number 3. So gate number 3 should open, this will close and the dust collector will come on automatically. Sanders on. Sense his vibration and it is up starting to open the gate. Just turning on the dust collector. The dust collector is pulling air through from the sanders. I'm turning the sander back off. We've got about a 10 second delay and it'll shut the dust collector back off automatically. Everything goes back down to zero. Now the last gate I used was the sander. That's number three. Say I want to move to the table saw. I'm going to go off screen here. The table saw uh, is actually number one. So I'm going to turn the table saw on. Now you see gate number one's opening. Dust collector's on. Gate number three is closing. Now I've only got the table saw gate open. Now if I want to run two things at the same time, I'm going to turn the sander back on while the table saw is running. Now it's going to open up two gates so I can use both gates. Now I have dust collection to both the sanders and the table saw. Turn the sander off. And I turn the table saw off. 
have no vibration from any of the motors, and it'll turn the dust collector back on. Fully automated. I don't have to do anything but go to a tool and use it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration of how the dust collection system is that I've set up. Um, I'm absolutely amazed at this thing. It's called EcoGate. Uh, this one's about 15, 20 years old, uh, vintage-wise. Uh, I did pick it up used. I know the company's still in business. I'm not sure how small of a product they make anymore. Like I said, this one is running, I'm running 220 out to my dust collector, and I'm controlling everything from a 220 breaker, and the... Uh, it was selectable between 220 and 110. However, anything in my shop I've got that will run on 220 is running on 220. But like I said, the dust collector, it, it, this is just awesome. And this, with the what, vibration sensors, the automatic gates, uh, it's a no-brainer. You just walk around the shop and use what you need to use. You don't have to worry about turning your dust collector on. You don't have to worry about which gate's open. If you have two machines in use, both gates will be open. And if you need to, I didn't show it earlier, I can actually go manual. It'll be a little louder here. And when it goes manual, I can choose which gate I want. Open that gate, close the other gate, whichever. And I can turn it right back off the same way. So anyhow, that uh, is just, it's going to be a lifesaver because I, I don't, have to do it as much and as I showed back in the beginning of the video by putting the cyclone on I think I'm going to be emptying the bag a lot less because the cyclone 99% of the dust going into the trash can I should be able to drop that thing out and empty it and not have to worry about the bags so enjoy thank you for watching and again subscribe if you would like and follow me at Hendrix Woodworking on Facebook thank you much